Hey, welcome back to the channel. We have a new writer with us in this video, and that is Laura and her new recently acquired Can-Am Riker Rally. We do a walk around. We get to hear about some of her accessories and some of her mods she's done herself, unlike me. Uh, I have Kevin do most of my stuff. I give him I give him a hand, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 mostly Kevin. So cool being able to hear her story. Uh, the reason why she picked the Can-Am Riker Rally over the 900 and the 600, uh, the, you know, some of the reasons why she just picked the Riker altogether over a plenty of other options. There's other three wheel options. There's other two wheel options. So it's cool hearing someone's a. Uh, uh, a side of the story that I, I haven't heard before, which is pretty interesting. So you'll have to stay tuned to the video to hear where she was coming from, uh, coming off of, and then on to the Can-Am Riker. Uh, so we had a lot of fun just cruising around. Uh, someone may have also got on the highway for the first time in this video, Girl Mouse Moto. It's always great meeting a new rider, um, especially a, a Riker rider and being able to hear their story and talk Riker, which is one of my favorite things to do right now. Uh, and that's me. Um, I don't know if you guys already ride, uh, whether it's Riker or motorcycle, but and you try not to keep too much in your pockets, but I feel something in my pocket and I try to keep them empty. That's why I use that tank bag there. And I felt the key to my, my dirt e-bike, uh, my electric bike in there. And I was like, uh oh, so I threw it in the front, which is another reason I like the front, but tank bag is also cool too. We talk about that a little bit because Laura has it. But yeah, um, met Laura on Instagram. I meet a bunch of uh, cool Riker riders that, that hit me up on Instagram. But Laura ended up only being like, uh, I don't even know if it's even 30 minutes north of us. So the option to meet up was there. Um, and she, she was already trying to go to this, uh, I don't know, it was like a biker bar, biker restaurant type place. It's actually in my town. I'm like, that's like two minutes from my place. So yeah, let's meet up and we'll get some cool uh, footage and do do a walk around. Um, I've done a walk. The last walk around I think I did was with Ricky and she actually met Ricky through social media too. So let's see what uh, she's got going on. You're so quiet. I, I didn't even hear you coming until I looked up. so clean and new. Oh, <laughs> what is wash? Yeah, I don't do that. Um, it's had like a spray once. No, it had soap because uh, Kevin did it. I just couldn't stand looking at it. Your phone fits in here. I got a little phone. What is it? iPhone, SE. SE? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, look at that. First time ever. Oh, other than Ricky's. It fits. Dang it. Yeah, this, uh, my phone doesn't do that. A lot of people ask about the tank bag and what fits and what doesn't fit, but my phone was a lot bigger than this yeah, before. <laughs> but the other phone I had was bigger. So it was like, uh, well, it was like this size but the screen was only like here to here or whatever. But I would have to cut like all this out yeah. in here or well, I wouldn't even thought about just doing it. Yeah. I'd rather have a mount on the bar. Oh yeah. Man, I, like I said, uh, I don't know if you were still part of the stream at that time, but I was talking about how I, I have one, but I just can't, can't stand looking at it. Uh, I wouldn't mind this. But when it's like sticking out, especially how big my phone is, you know, it's kind of just like in the way. Before I forget to give you some real mouse stuff. <laughs> Plus I keep messing it up when I put my phone in there. <laughs> and everything matches. You got the white stripe on the helmet. And that looks like uh, an expensive helmet. Mm -hmm. And it's got the... Uh, it all started with these and then it went from here and then... Like you bought the helmet and everything before you bought the Riker? Yeah, I bought my gloves first. And then I was like, well, okay. So then I was like, I need a helmet. And then I bought boots. And then I was like, oh, I need my Riker. <laughs> you know, a lot of people do that. Uh, 
I didn't, uh, but I did it with my uh, electric dirt bike, like because well, I bought it, and then as I was waiting forever for it to come in, I bought all the stuff and got them before I got the dirt bike. So then I set it up and I was like, you know, before I ride it, let's just start putting this stuff on. So when people ask about like how was the seat and how was the stock handlebars, I don't know, because I switched all that stuff out. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you have a rally, so. You already have the cool, uh, just like uh, Ricky's when we did his, uh, he's got the cool suspension on the back and on the front, so you're already ready for the the two up, and it comes with the max mount like Ricky's rally, but you already put the back seat on. So. Yeah, I did. It's tough, but it gives you like a little backwards. Well, oh. I, I drive this and stuff like this. What do you mean? Like, y'all? Over the top yeah, of it. Like, you, know, you just get in there. Yeah. And they it's can't. Just comfortable for me. And these aren't just white. These are like the cool ones. They were extra. Yeah, that's how they get you. Did you go right there at right now to get it? No, I got it Oh, dang. They wanted like $3,000 more or something. You went down there to pick it up? Or? Oh, dang. And you rode it back? They, no, they put it on the trailer. Oh, <laughs> I was like. I had, like, well, I hadn't even taken classes or anything. So I was like, I bought it before I even took the class. Wait, you said you got it where? Where did you buy it from? New Mexico. In New, where in New Mexico? Oh. I did have the, uh, what do you call them? The little. The end links or whatever, but not not the sway bar. That was the first thing I did with the end links. The end links. The end links oh, you got the same box. ones, the spider extras or whatever. Nice. Yeah. Because I had been watching a bunch of videos on the way to get And then when I took the other ones off, I was like, oh, now I see the spider. Oh, that they're just like these piece of plastic? <laughs> it's like, you mean my entire suspension is rested on these two piece of ABS plastic things? Uh, well, nice. Yeah, that I did mine because people say, you know, why did you do that and not the bar too or whatever. Those don't do because I could. I couldn't do the bar, you know. It was like the first weekend I had it, and they're only like what eighty bucks, so they wouldn't cost that much. And then you can put it on yourself. You didn't have to jack it up. You didn't have to do anything scary. So that's why I did it because it was like an easy mod I could do on my own, and then I kind of just worked from there. Because on the live stream today, we were talking about your lock, so you ended up going with the drill. Oh, see, that looks clean. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I've seen it. That's the, This is the best the I've seen. The only was uh, put tape on it and then drill it, and then it comes out. Because when I, on these, you have to drill into these for the lights, too. So oh, to put these on? Yeah, you got to drill on the inside of it. You got to drill a hole for these to put in. But I thought there's already a light right there. Well, you take it out and you have to drill a hole back in. Oh, another one. With these, you have to drill a hole in the inside. And you have to drill a hole for this too, right? Yeah. So are you taking this off to do it? Yes. You just take these out and these bolts, and then it just comes off. You don't have to worry about taking your tire off. Yeah, see, see, that's where Kevin does that. For us. <laughs> I don't know. That's when I'm like trying to like charge my camera or post something on Instagram and I turn around and Kevin's already done that part. And uh, I just trust him with it. But dang, so you're doing all this yourself. Dang. Like this one, I learned my lesson the first time I took it out. Because you couldn't adjust your bolts or anything. Like you just had to take them off. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but I had it a little closer. And I didn't think about, you know, how much it goes down. So you couldn't really get on it? I couldn't, I couldn't get down all the way, so I had to kind of lift up and go down, and I was like rolling it to go. Oh, it like, oh no! No, <laughs> I yeah. Was only like three miles an hour. <laughs> but still, would you just like throw throw your heel out or something like that? Yeah. I just kind of scoot up. I just noticed you got some serious boots, you know? You make, you make me look bad. I mean, I already look bad compared to anyone with this type of gear, but those are for real. Nice. And then you have the rally seat. 
So you can't knock that. That's always going to be better than the stock 600. And then the windshield, you had to get that and install it? I did. Doesn't the rally come with something though, or it doesn't? It doesn't. have to add it, so it does come with blue. Yeah, two things going on in here. Wow. It's annoying though when you're going to snow and you're trying to get it. Oh, dang. But if you're like on the hallway or... Oh, so you can roll without it and ha take this off? Uh, no. Oh, you mean the whole thing the you whole take it off? Thing, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Because if you're in town, it makes it harder to see. Nice. Yeah, and then I do the lights too. Like, These are too cool. Kevin. Kevin just did that. He doesn't have this though. Yeah. And then when you reverse, they all go crazy. Oh, nice. Kind of like hazard switch. Yeah, I like this the most because uh, it, it still looks like it's stock until so the lights actually work and then they do that, that chasing type thing. I was just one. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool as it is. That's. That's the idea of like the rallies, you know? They all have all the same stuff. When you have a stock 600, you gotta kinda, you you do your own upgrades, but you kinda pass it up, you know what I mean? Like, the rallies are way cool for the, the front end shock, um, but it, compared to the stock 600, but then you get these, you know what I mean? And then step it up. But you have to pay for those. Like, I haven't even done the backside yet, dude. Yeah, that's like uh, that's like a thousand dollars, I think, just for the back one. So I still have the crappy one. Like it, it doesn't adjust like the way yours does. You have to get a wrench and do it. So I just have it. I have it like all the way as stiff as it can. But you put 220 pounds on it, you know, and it treats it bad. But they give it to you with with it on like the one setting, like on the lowest setting, like everybody. You don't keep anything in there. Dude, my thing is so junked out. I always feel bad. Like, if I'm really going to go somewhere, I have to, like... Oh, yeah, no. Mine's, like, rocks and stuff from all over. I actually just cleaned it out, and it's still got crap in here. Gotta have... See, I didn't even know this was in here. Dang it, dude. Uh, and this. Yeah, it's a junk thing. You're only supposed to put like four pounds or something is like the limit. And like I said, I'll keep it like rocks and stuff on there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a little bag that's got those in it and it's never in there when I need it. Uh, I think it's just like sitting on the floor in my apartment. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a bad idea. It needs to be in there. You're a pro. You're way pro than me. And you still got paper plates. You just barely bought this thing. <laughs> and you're rolling clean. You got the boots, the helmet. And yeah, because I just started using my shoe. And this looks like a way better version. Because it looks like you have the you have the visor like this that goes down. Yeah, and then it's got pin lock yeah, system. Oh, you, you can't wear contacts? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can, but I hate contacts. Oh, no, there's people that can't wear contacts. So, Ian... I do what I wanted to wear. I love the contacts. As in, like, how you wanted it to be? Yeah, oh. accessory-wise and stuff like that. I already knew, like, what I needed to have before I got it. And how did you know that? A lot of research. <laughs> research like... YouTube, Instagram, YouTube, and then Instagram at the bottom. A good channel for sources of not learning anything. So you don't have to. You don't have to say you've learned zero from Throw Mouse Moto. That's fine. I understand that. But there are some good. That's what I say when I'm doing like videos where I'm installing stuff. They're not how-to videos. There's plenty of other cool channels that show you that stuff. And I'm not, I am not one of them. If you want to know how much fast food you can put on your body and your Riker, that's Thrill Mouse Moto. 
you want to know how to install an exhaust or whatever that is not but I do show you our experience of doing it so this is what they look like when you wash them that's crazy I get comments saying like wash your Riker or whatever it's like yeah I think that I want to wash it until I'm like or I could go ride so <laughs> I spent like maybe 30 minutes a bucket of water. <laughs> oh, with a bucket of water. Yeah, yeah. Water. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, it looks I good. It so what made you, um, I know that you did the research to know what all you wanted your Riker to come out to be after you bought it. So that means you knew that you wanted a rally over a 600 and a regular 900. And why is that? So the rally because of like the clearance, the suspension that it comes with, and all that. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of part of it, if it being as high that it is, making it the rally, is the suspension itself. When I just did the um, stage three suspension on the front, they raised my record like whoop. And when you put it side by side with the rally, it's actually pretty close. But I had to say that there. Yeah. Like last night, I was practicing night riding. Practicing? Like, what does that mean? Because I've never been out all night on a bike, so I was like, well, this is what it's like. So I went out there, and my first experience was probably a really scary one. So the truck in front of me I was following, uh, they hit a roll of carpet that was in the middle of the road that I wouldn't have seen right away until I was like up close to it. And so he sent it flying up in the air and then it comes down and I'm like, <laughs> there's no one on the right or the left and I was like, well, it's taking up my whole lane so I swerved around it and then I took off. But that was my first night riding experience. So during your first night riding experience, which was your first test, this was a test run, you were like dodging rolls of carpet. Yeah. And is this on the highway? Yeah. Okay, so, you're, so what you were doing to test ride for the first time at night was getting on the highway, and then you're dodging and doing maneuvers through rolls of carpet. So it was pretty successful then. Yeah. But now you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere, it's a tiny little town, and so there's, there's not like one street that's out, so it's like super, super hard, so all I have is just like the glow of my oh, yeah. lights, and of course the headlights, and you know, I just have to stop them. Oh, I was going to ask that. Yeah, so With all of these mods where you're drilling, taking fenders off, installing these cool deals, you got the hand guard that just realized that. And you are running the yellow dull deals. That's you got to step that up because uh, in your next night ride test. <laughs> but when you're ready to do that, we do have the Thrill Mouse Moto Garage with lead mechanic slash CEO owner operator Kevin the Menace for it. And we can help you out with that. Even though it's it's something really easy, I can just do it at my apartment right there. Because we did we did mine and we did Ryan's, um, but that's if you get those fling mod ones. I know there's some fancier ones that they have. I think you just do them the same way. But the fling mod ones, you get the little uh, ring to where it fits, replaces the other one, and they just go right on, and you, you just plug them in. So compared to all the mods you've done yourself, uh, you can't beat that one because it's going to take you no time. You're an expert now. You've been doing everything herself, man. She got us all beat. You loving it? Floorboards. Yeah. I didn't get on the highway all the way here. I didn't on the yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You came from Belton. Yeah. All the way on the axis. Of the, the, how long did that take? <laughs> do, do your thing. But it is trippy that you did that and that you don't do it. But that's what you do because people say like, 
I'm scared to get on the highway. And then people give them all these ideas. It's all like, then don't go on the highway. You're scared to go on the highway. Don't go on the highway. Is that, is, these are emotions and reactions that people can't talk your body out of. You know what I mean? If it's scary to be on the highway, then that to you, that's scary. To them, it's not. But they can't give you advice. You know what I mean? Unless you're really looking for encouragement. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I'm so scared. I got harassed by the police there. Oh, God. This, he just rented a, uh, did you get to watch a live live stream on Instagram today? He rented a Vanderhall, and we rode it around, like, just, just now, or whatever. And then his first story about it was saying getting pulled over on it yesterday or whatever. It's like, get out of here. You knew what you wanted by getting the rally and all of what you were gonna do with it. And you knew that over the 600 and the 900 because you live in a off-roady type area where you want the clearance, you want the shocks. That was the bonus for you. Pretty much like, police shape, rock road, mm -hmm. Now, but why a Riker? Why a Riker? Mm -hmm. Since they came out, I've always liked the way they look. And okay, so I don't even like riding a little bicycle. Okay. I have a tricycle. Okay. And it's my favorite thing, and, I, and so I used to live in Austin, and so I would go from my apartment and I would ride it all the way to work. Uh -huh. On a tricycle, with no gears, just straight. Just, just huffing it. <laughs> yeah. So you. So I've always been straight with a bicycle. This is, this is new. I've never heard this before, and I've heard a bunch, that's not just for me personally, but um, uh, Rolling on Three Wheels, Shadow, Reich, Shadow Black Riker, he does like interviews all the time on his little podcast, or not little, it's a big podcast, on YouTube, and he asks them, you know, why Riker, where he got it from, or whatever, and I haven't heard, well, I was doing a three-wheel bicycle, so why not a three-wheel motorcycle, it's like you come from, you came from three wheels came from three wheels i haven't not heard that <laughs> i haven't heard that before that's too good wow so you were like if i can ride a manual tricycle to work and back on a daily commute or whatever then you put a motor on it and we're in business and that was 2019 when they came out and then you just been wanting one and then now you got one wow well that's a pretty easy easy story that makes a lot of sense who do you ride with do you ride with other bikes or bikers no, okay well i could see things like being on the highway probably take you a while to do if there was probably times where you had a couple other people to ride with and stuff like that and kind of run with you do you think that 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 would make you more comfortable without with being on the highway Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. You know, if you're gonna do some hard, cool, hardcore distance riding, you know, it'd be good. It'd be on the highway. If you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd probably get there quicker if you did that. Too. Plus, uh, you know, when you're doing a uh, Up on a ramp and then exiting, exiting. And then going mm -hmm. further, and then exiting, and getting comfortable with it, and then yeah, I've heard that too, and that makes sense. But I can't, I just really can't give any. I mean, I'm just a psycho. I got on it, and I was all like, "What can it do?" And then I'm just, you know, with no nothing, obviously. And uh, I mean, I didn't even get my license until like a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what well, was because of the uh, COVID? It, uh, I made my, my earliest appointment was nine months from when I did my class. I was like, oh, what? What am I supposed to do? Not ride it? That's crazy. Yeah, so I took the test. The test has a little twist where class takes the test. And then so after I took the class and I got my little paper, that whole day I searched for places that were, like, from here all the way to Belton to see what places were open mm -hmm. with, you know, the students available. Yeah. And I found one the next day, and I went the next day, and I drove to that town and went to What town was that? 
Oh, I'm not familiar. I had to go to San Antonio. It's that direction. Oh, gotcha. And you ro you're saying you rode the Axis rode the... Oh, wait, you drove your car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you ride there. Yeah, I, that's the only time... That's the first time I rode a rally. They had one rally, and I was like... I was like the poor kid out of all the people that were there. And uh, actually, I was the only male, too, <laughs> I was there. And uh, they were like, oh, we just got our rallies. And they had the dealership. All, each one of them was like that. Oh, yeah, we got to have fun and be silly. It's like, yo, I bought mine so I can, like, go places, go to work. You know what I mean? And stuff. It's like, I need this license. And, uh, and I was like, I just got a 600. And I was like, since there's only one rally, you think that I can ride it since you guys have rally, you know? And they were like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I, I, I learned, uh, well, I was riding for a couple months before that class. Uh, but I was taught proper ways for the first time on the rally. I really wanted to get on a spider. I don't want a spider, but I thought that was going to be my opportunity to, uh, you know, ride one for the first time. But the, they don't, they didn't have them anymore. So, yeah. So, do you think you see yourself riding with people, or are you just because you haven't run across people, or are you just like riding solo, or? Very many friends, so. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, it wouldn't matter if you had friends because they'd have to have rides. <laughs> yeah. You can't be me and force all your friends at gunpoint to buy Rikers, you know, like Ryan and Kevin and everyone else. And I'm trying to do Brian, but his Honda Shadow still kind of works, so he's just going to hold on to that. He's rented one. Well, oh, he's, rented, oh, he's rented the same one twice for a couple weekends, yeah. and that's been real fun, but... Oh, yeah, but, I mean... Yeah, that's why I went with this one, because I was like, you know, I'll stick with this, and then if I want to get something later on, I'll just let her in. Yeah, you can do that. Go ahead and, I mean, the, the pegs are going to be too crazy, but sit on it and then stick your hands on it like you're riding and have a... Uh... Why don't you have this one? Where is that on? It's out of touch. Yeah. <laughs> that is different. Of course, of course, you'd have to ride something to really have an opinion on it. But do you think that someone, you coming from the rally, having the stock bars, and then you using these style bars, would that make a difference for you? Yeah. You can already feel the difference. Well, you said that you ride like aggressively or your stance. So. Is that because of your bars, or that's just the way you like? Would you still do that with these bars? Hmm. And it doesn't like. It doesn't bother your back or anything to do that with those bars. No, because I like to sit up straight. It is modular. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Do you feel like your cheeks are broken in? Yeah, I mean they're comfortable. They just don't give me a feeling. Oh, okay. Um, mine, well, shoeys are really good, so you shouldn't really have to break them in because I don't feel like that with my shoey helmet. But uh, this helmet wasn't either. But the icon I had, it was like really, really firm cheeks. Like it, it didn't feel like I could break them in on my own. So someone gave me a tip of taking them and sticking them under your side of the bed. And for like two nights, and they get broken in, dude. Because that's like like under your uh, on top of your box spring under your mattress, and they just you could probably do it one night. So if you ever thought that they could probably use a little bit more breaking in, put them under your in between your box spring and your mattress at least for a night and see what happens. Because they just snap out, just the cheeks. You don't have to do the whole thing. Real cool being able to chat with Laura and get a female writer on the channel, which is definitely a rarity. We, ju we just don't come across a lot of Riker writers, um, period, in our area. And if and if you do, and, and you're a Riker writer, you know how it is. It's like, well, I saw a guy, you know, on my way to the grocery store, you know, but and I followed him for a little bit, but, it, but I couldn't stop him or, or things like that. That's kind of how it is here, too, but probably less people than where you're at. Um, so uh, the power of social media definitely helped with that uh, to be able to, to meet up with Laura. So that was real cool. 
and like i said um story is interesting coming off of a of an actual tricycle like a bike a bicycle with three wheels a tricycle you know what i mean like a pedal pedal tricycle to a riker so it's like a powered version of that um so i'm glad i got that story on uh on camera too but yeah so the, the one of the main things we were talking about that tripped me out is she drove she drove all the way to my town you know on the access roads and stuff and you know she's just like probably not as comfortable to be on uh 35 which is our interstate but at the same time she says it's, you know it's chill to be on the side and rather prefer uh, a lot of times to be on the access road anyways which is cool and you know everybody should just do whatever they want to do i know a lot of people want to give advice about being on the highway or what to do but you know what it's like a lot of times it's just they're just doing people are just doing what they want to do and if it's something where they were scared uh not saying that's laura's case but some people um you know just take your time with it uh, if you want to take encouragement from other people that's cool but just kind of do your thing i mean you got a riker you're doing your thing uh, just like Laura is, just keep doing it until you do whatever you want. You know, if you want to make that move, you can. But this is what happens. So there is no access road when you loop around like this and make the U-turn. She is, so she is forced to be on I-35, which is a, which is our interstate. But look, I'm going. We're going like 78. She does not look like somebody that's uncomfortable to be on the on the highway. Um, but we have to exit because uh, she's gonna have to get gas before she heads out. She ends up hitting me up uh, later on Instagram and then says, uh, hey, just so you know, um, I ended up taking 35 the whole way back. <laughs> so I was all like, I, there, so today was the day, you know, no one made her do it. No tips or anything like that, but it's a lot of fun meeting, meeting Laura. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Thrill Mouse Moto. I was paid to say this since Barry said he felt kind of weird asking. He also wanted me to say Baja Blast Slams and yeah dog, Thrill Mouse Moto.